While making a high-speed, low-altitude pass over Blosand Hill, the left wing of his F-8 Crusader sheared off and threw the body of the plane into a spin. The jet rolled and impacted the ground at approximately 500 miles per hour. Lieutenant James Cannon never knew what hit him. It was July 12, 1970 at 7.50 a.m. I served two tours as a patrol ranger at Anza Borrego Desert State Park and Ocotillo Wells SVRA in the late 70s and early 80s. During my patrols, I must have driven by the site of Lieutenant Cannon's wreck more than 100 times. I never knew it was there. On one of our adventures last year, Sid and Robert and I hiked around the fault wash floating dock target to get a feel of all the military activity in that area. Sid found a small aluminum part which resembled a fuselage of a jet aircraft. All three of us had seen similar debris at the crash site of an F-8 Crusader in Stav Cove, which is just 10 miles from this site. We speculated that this was from a crash of a jet fighter, but left it at that. Much to our surprise, this was the part of another F-8 Crusader. A few weeks ago, our friend Joe Adoni, an air wreck specialist, sent Robert a copy of the report documenting Lieutenant Cannon's fatal flight. Little did we know that we were close to the exact location of that crash site. This episode documents our efforts to try to find any remaining parts of Lieutenant Cannon's plane. Hi, I'm Bill Berry. Welcome to my desert adventures. I'm out here at Fault, Fault Wash with my friends Robert and Sid and we're doing a grid search looking for the crash site of an F-8 Crusader that crashed here in 1970. We got an early morning start and we're at the entrance to Palo Verde Wash off of S-22 and had to let air out of the tires so that we could get through all of the mud. Our first stop was back at that floating dock where we know that we were close to where we found that first part of the plane. So we headed out into the desert to see what we could find. I see some big chunks of metal up ahead. It looks like uh, practice bombs to me. Our search in this area covered almost two miles and we couldn't find any debris from the plane, but we did find a lot of military artifacts in the area. So this is a really heavy bomb fragment right here. It's, you can see it's got the striations. Man, that was a big piece that's broken off. Well, we've been out now for about 20 minutes. We changed our strategy. We're gonna kind of do a zigzag pattern where we're looking to uh, kind of see if we can come across this, the line that that jet came down. We know that it uh, was flying over there coming this direction um, and it went down and was spread for almost two miles around here and we found a piece of it the last time we were here Sid found a piece of it we just didn't know what it was at the time not far from where my truck is parked well we walked a mile from the truck going toward the buttes and still no sign of that F-8 Crusader. We're going to go back to the truck, which is so about 600 yards behind me, go downstream about a mile, and then walk another mile down toward the buttes. OK, we've come almost a mile closer to the buttes. You can actually see that little hill out in front of me off to the left of the main butte. The plane supposedly lost its wing right at that butte. And, um, and then crashed out here. So we're gonna see if we can find any parts in this part of the desert. We've gone almost a mile from uh, where we did our initial hike. So you gotta remember this crash happened over 50 years ago. We're looking for parts that uh, are probably pretty small. And it's pretty obvious that a lot of water has come through here over the years. I think I may have found a part of that crash because it's the exact kind of material that you'd see in a crash site like this. At about the same time that I found my little fin, Sid picked up a couple of pieces. I think we're at the site. 
These are small enough the Navy probably missed them when they did their cleanup. Right. Well, we're right in the heart of the off-highway vehicle area. People drive by this stuff all day long, every day. And most of them probably have no idea that this is a crash site from the 1970s. Tell me what you're seeing there, oh, Bill. Everything is just, I see cables, I see broken pieces of aluminum. Oh. There's no question this is very similar to the F8 Crusader site that you and I visited at Stag Cove. You know what's shocking to me is how many of those F8s crashed. Oh, look at that, Sid. That's fuselage for sure. And this is stuff that the Navy was supposed to collect to help them reconstruct. Look at that. These wiring harnesses. Look at the pressure that they were under for the crash. There's, this goes pretty deep. It's all wiring harness. That high quality aircraft material. Yeah, it's all polished, like yeah. probably alloy. Been out here for over 50 years. 50 years and it's still got a nice patina. Yeah. Look at that. Amazing. Electrical wire. So we found about 30 fragments of the F.A. Crusader at this point. And uh, remember that the U.S. Navy recovered this jet so they could rebuild it and, and try to uh, determine what caused the catastrophic crash. This is a really good chunk of fuselage. You can see the uh, welding and the rivets on the inside. And you can see the aircraft's green color on the outside. So it's painted. This is definitely a piece of the exterior fuselage. So Sid, Bill and Sid are finding this, this beautiful alloy material all over the place. Those are those blades, you think, from Turban the... Turbine blades, yeah. yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Something similar. That's heavier. So the F-8 was a single engine, right? Yes. She's With uh, one, one crewman, one lieutenant. One crewman, single engine. Lieutenant Cannon, and I believe he had over a thousand hours time in the aircraft. Yep. Aircraft was built in 1960. And he died in 1970, so it was 10 years old. Yeah. But the aircraft had a complete rehab in 68. Uh, and then it had like, what, 6,000 miles, right? Something like that. And then that hill right there is where they found the wing, right? Yeah. That's right at Blow Sand Hill. The accident report stated that Lieutenant Cannon departed Miramar at 7.38 on a flight to El Centro. He was assigned the mission of carrying spare parts to the squadron detachment. At 7.50 a.m., the aircraft was flying at low altitude and high speed through a small saddleback of a desert mountain. The wings separated from the aircraft while in the saddleback, and the fuselage continued ballistic approximately eight-tenths of a mile before striking the desert floor. At impact, an explosion occurred which destroyed the aircraft and spread wreckage forward of this point approximately six-tenths of a mile. As you can see from this aerial, it's a vast expanse of desert. It's not easy to find those small parts as you hike around through this open area. I think we were lucky to actually come across those small pieces. And now we know where Lieutenant James Cannon lost his life in the service of his country. Well, it was time to head home. We'd spent quite a bit of time in the desert washes and I actually picked up a whole lot of mud. It's probably gonna take me about three hours to clean the truck. We had another great desert adventure.